Vermont. One year after Tropical Storm Irene, the historic response, the ongoing recovery, and the state's resolve to persevere. We lost six lives. People lost loved ones, people lost livelihoods, and people lost their homes. Vermont Agency of Transportation Secretary Brian Searles. It had quite an impact, and it all happened, you know, within about a 24-hour period. Irene's uh, passing over the horizon from us now, but uh, she's definitely a big storm, and uh, people in her way better batten down the hatches. Nearly a foot of rain fell over Vermont's mountainous central and southern region over a 24-hour period, turning once docile rivers and streams into high-speed torrents that took lives and caused massive erosion and widespread flooding. Ditches ruined, plug culverts, stuff like that. So the whole, the whole area was impacted to a point, but uh, half of the 400 miles of road I have in Rutland County were closed. Region-wide, 146 segments of State Road totaling 531 miles. The equivalent distance between New York City and Richmond, Virginia was severely impacted. The water just started coming and actually right behind me um, there was a 7,800 square foot building and it's gone. 13 communities became isolated Thirty-four state bridges, including several historic wooden structures, had to be shut down. Two hundred miles of railway was impassable, and tens of thousands of people lost power. Not since the deadly floods of 1927 had Vermont experienced this kind of widespread devastation. VTRANS initiated its Incident Command System a standardized emergency management approach that brings multiple agencies, their resources, including equipment, personnel, and communications under a single command. Primarily one of the biggest activities is the sharing of communication. They were overwhelmed. The leadership, leadership could not sustain communication as well as build the roads back. Even towns at higher elevations like Killington did not escape Irene's wrath. Chris Nyberg runs the massive Killington Ski Resort. If you do it on a financial basis, about $6 million in damage. And luckily I had flood insurance, which covered $5 million, roughly. The next day it was beautiful, sunny, gorgeous day here, and it was like nothing happened, but no one could come or go out of mm -hmm. Killington. Private citizens became an army of public servants. 1,800 workers from construction and consulting firms hundreds of workers from Maine and New Hampshire DOTs, and nearly 800 citizen soldiers from National Guard units which specialized in road and bridge building. We reached out, we got tremendous help from the Maine DOT and New Hampshire DOT. Uh, I think uh, more than 225 people, more than 200 pieces of equipment. But they came here to Vermont and stayed, and we'll be eternally grateful for their help. It was uh, tremendous. Uh, on the National Guard side, uh, we had 11 National Guard units from eight states as far away as South Carolina. Vermonters learned which routes had reopened using the Google Irene crisis map. We set up a special team of our folks to work with Google and within 24 hours of issuing the let's do it, we had an, a real-time Google map system online. And that was a way people could get information about how roads were closed, where only emergency access could, could be gained, and when we were opening roads. And when we opened a road, it was a huge celebration. And it really, I think, gave people a sense of progress and of hope that we would recover. By December 31st, 2011, just four months after Irene's devastating blow, the last section of closed state roadway was reopened. This extraordinary accomplishment could not have been possible without cross-agency cooperation between VTRANS and the Vermont Agency of Natural Resources, which expedited permits and provided its expertise 
in river engineering. We had to work carefully together to make sure that those the reconstruction work was done in a way that made sense, both for the rivers in the sense of protecting the ecological values, the fish, the habitat, and so forth, but also because if you do it right, if you do road construction right in river corridors, it reduces the likelihood of future damage and reduces future public costs. That's critically important because the cost goes way beyond just dollars and cents. One year later, some of the 3,500 homes that were damaged are still uninhabitable. Communities like Tiny Stockbridge, population 700, are still reeling. Two dozen homes remain empty here. Families and tax revenues gone. I believe it's like pushing $2 million on what we're going to lose on our grand list. And then you can never build on the property again. So it's, it's a, not a win situation, I, I don't think, for anybody. The hardships are real, but so too is the state's resolve to learn from Irene and to triumph over tragedy. I Am Vermont Strong continues to be a rallying cry for the state. The logo on license plates sells for $25. The donation goes to Vermonters in need of assistance and to aid local food banks. Vermont is committed to building stronger and to doing even better. It is setting firm targets to improve cross-agency collaboration and coordination emergency preparedness and response, timely dissemination of travel information, and it's looking for innovative ways to design, build, and speed up project delivery. There's plenty of evidence le leading us to conclude that it'll probably happen more often. Hopefully not at this scale, but uh, we'll deal with torrential rains uh, as we did just a couple of months ago here in 2012, where we had another million and a half dollars worth of damage. Uh, more often in the future. So the discussion about our infrastructure is, what can we do? For me and for the many folks involved heavily in what remains ahead, we know that for many Vermonters it is still a daily challenge and uh, the emotional scars of the loss that many have endured. And so we want to be there for them and continue this mission forward even as we recognize uh, the great success and the great story of Vermont's recovery from Irene.